Good afternoon. So until now, we've been talking about how to count sphere, the mitzvah of counting spheres of Omer. Now we're going to talk about the customs that we keep during Sphira to Omer. Now, in addition to the Torah saying that there's a mitzvah to count Sphira, the days between Passover and Shavuos, as we count up to receiving the Torah, there's also a tragic event which happened. The students of Rabbi Akiva, uh, 24,000 students of his, they died. And the reason was is because they were not uh, practicing honor. They didn't honor each other and treat each other respectfully the way that they should. They should have. And the reason that they were punished with such a terrible punishment punishment to die was because that these rabbis, the students of Rabbi Akiva, were going to be the main transmitters of Torah to the next generation. And since they did not have the proper interpersonal skills, there was going to be something wrong in the whole transmission of Torah. Transmitting Torah to the next generation is such an important thing that those responsible for ensuring its accurate transmission to the next generation have to be of impeccable character. Character, And after Rabbi Akiva lost all of his students, he started again with just five students. And all the Torah we have today is just from five students. So you can imagine if those 24,000 students hadn't died, how much more Torah we would have had. Um, I don't mean that we would have added to the Torah, but understanding of the Torah. So because of this horrible tragedy that they died, they was, these were really great men. Just they were lacking in a certain aspect of their interpersonal skills, so they passed away. So in a sign of mourning, there are certain customs that we have. And that's in fact why I have a beard now, not because I wanted to grow a beard. In fact, I find it very itchy. But uh, So let's let's start. We're in, now we're in Simon Tuf Tzadi Gimel, 493. We'll start from the beginning. The custom is to not get married from Passover to Shavuos until Lagba Baomer. Lag Baomer is the 33rd day of the Omer. Because during this time, the students of Rabbi Akiva passed away. But to do Erisun or Kedushin, that's allowed. Now, there's two parts of a Jewish wedding ceremony. The first part is Erisun or Kedushin. The second part is Nisuin. Erisun or Kedushin, it's a different word to the same procedure, is when the man puts a ring on the on the uh, woman's finger and she becomes forbidden to every every other man in the world and then that's kedushin nisuin is the stage of the marriage ceremony where she becomes permitted to him as um, as her husband now these two stages used to be done about a year apart back in the times of the talmud so the shulchan aruch is saying that during sphira one is allowed to do Kedush in the first stage, but not Nisu in the second stage. Now we do these uh, two procedures together at every wedding. We just do these two steps together, so it's not so relevant to this halacha nowadays. Now let's say somebody uh, got married during Sphira. What do we do? So we say we don't punish them. They did the wrong thing, but we don't punish them, meaning they did the Nisu in stage. But from Lagba Omer and on, everything is allowed. So we're going to learn that there's two customs, pretty much. There's actually technically more than two, but there's the two main customs of observing the restrictions of Sphere Sa Omer. So the first restriction we learned about is to not get married. So one custom is that it's from the beginning of Sphira until the 33rd day of the Omer. The other custom is that it's from Rosh Chodesh Iyar, and the first day of the month of Iyar, until Shavuos. So for those that keep the first, what they call the first half, that will be ending this Friday. And for those that keep the second half, it keeps uh, it keeps going. So the Shulchan Aruch is of the opinion, his custom was to keep the first half. So the first 33 days of the Omer, it's forbidden to get married, but after that, it's allowed. So let's see the Mishnah Brewer. Shalom Lisa Isha. Ve'in chilek ben nisuin shal mitzvah, kagon she'en lo banim o yeshlo. He says it makes no difference whether the marriage is a mitzvah. What's a marriage of a mitzvah? A person, uh, it's his first time getting married, so he could have children. Or if it's not a mitzvah, let's say he already has kids. So really the only mitzvah to get married is to have kids. So if he already had kids and he's getting remarried, that's not technically a mitzvah. But we don't, we don't make a difference. All, all weddings are prohibited. However, there's one case where you are allowed to get married. If you got divorced from your wife and get remarried, that you're allowed to do because it's not so much of a simcha. It's not considered like a, a super happy occasion like marrying somebody new. Now, obviously, a uh, grusha, uh, marry, remarrying a divorced woman, that's only if she wasn't married in between. If a man divorces his wife and she married somebody else and then gets divorced, he's not allowed to take her back. 
not allowed to get remarried. We should not have a lot of happiness during this time because of the tragedy which occurred. However, if something happens, if someone gets a new item for whatever reason, uh, he should still make the blessing of Shachianu. Shachianu is a blessing we make when we're happy, so maybe we would think during this time we should not make the blessing of Shachianu. Says the Mishnah Bruin, no, if something happens to you, that's, uh, you know, you get a new suit or whatever, or whatever, whatever it is that, that happens that would require a bracha of Shachianu, you should make. Shop your dummy. Shamiyak Kadmenu Acher. So he said to do Kedushin, this first stage of marriage, where the, the first step, that you're allowed to do. What's the reason? Because maybe someone else will get her. Right? You want to marry a girl, so if, if you don't, uh, you know, you might miss the boat. If you don't make a move, someone else might take her. So you're allowed to do Kedushin. You can make actually a meal for that. And he says, nowadays, that we do the marriage process in one stage, nevertheless, you can make... Uh, a suda for shaduchim, meaning you can get engaged. You're allowed to get engaged during sphira, and you could even make a little meal. But you shouldn't uh, dance and have celebrations and, and music. But you could still make a meal, and you could still get engaged because it's the same, right? The same uh, reason. You don't want uh, someone else to to get her if you if you don't uh, if you don't if you don't uh, make a move. And of course, if uh, you're not allowed to dance and rejoice and play music for a simcha, like getting engaged, for sure you shouldn't for other reasons, so you shouldn't go to a dance party. So we said if someone gets married, then they're not supposed to do that, but we don't punish them. But he says that if someone got a haircut or shave during Svira, people would actually, they would actually get uh, like um, a penalty, and they would get punished. They would have to pay like a knas, a, uh, like a penalty tax. Okay. So we said after Lag like Ba Omer, every, everything's allowed. So the Shohanar, the Mishabura says that's only according to the first custom that we said. Like we'll explain in Sif Beis. However, to us, but us who are, we go like the second, we hold of the second half of Sphira. Lisa. So it's still, for those that hold of the second half of Sphira, it's still prohibited to get married after Lagba Omer. Now, Lagba Omer itself, you can get married, but after that, you can't. Even for those who keep the second half of Sphira, Lagba Omer is like a, like a brick. The law is the same for getting a haircut and getting married. However, there's a leniency for us. Right? If you keep the second half, that means you're allowed to get married and cut your hair until Rosh Chodesh year. Well, any Rosh Chodesh gufa yivor b'sif gimel about Rosh Chodesh itself. We'll talk about later in sif gimel. But tam la'elu shneim and hagamivor lekame. We're going to explain the reasons for these customs later. The afsh la'nogim iser gam ad Rosh Chodesh year. Mikol makam yimchav Rosh Chodesh b'shabbos. Now, if you hold the first half, he says, if Rosh Chodesh year falls out on Shabbos, kaven sheish kan tosef simcha. Shabbos Rosh Chodesh, if Shabbos falls on Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh falls on Shabbos, since there's an addition of happiness, you're able to get, you're able to get a haircut, Erev Shabbos, and shave. You could also get married that day. Since the main part of the meal will be Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh. Back in the day, people would often get married on Friday and then have the uh, festive meal on Shabbos. Obviously, there wouldn't be music because it was Shabbos, but it was still a festive meal. So we learned that there are two customs of keeping Svira, which we are going to Blinader discuss later on, more details about those customs. The first general custom is, the first half, what we call, is from the beginning of Svira until Rosh Chodesh, uh, excuse me, until Lagba Omer. The second custom is from Rosh Chodesh Iyar until about Shavuos. And we learned that during this time, one is not allowed to shave and get a haircut or get married. And even though one can't get married, he's allowed to get engaged and he can even make a meal, but he shouldn't dance and uh, and have music. And we learned that if someone gets married, even though he did the wrong thing, we're not going to punish him. And um, the reason is, is because we're in mourning for the, the great tragedy of the students of Rabbi Akiva, who were the transmitters of Torah, who, who passed away during this time as a punishment for not having the appropriate interpersonal skills for men in their standing. With that, I wish everyone a beautiful afternoon.